Last season was anything but easy for Trevor Zegras. It was the most adversity-filled season he's ever had in his career. After missing most of training camp and preseason due to contract negotiations, Zegras struggled out the gate, managing just two points in 12 games, while dealing with a lower body injury that eventually sidelined him for nearly six weeks. When he finally returned, he made an immediate impact, scoring a lacrosse-style goal in his first game back and collecting three points over the next four games. Unfortunately, just eight games after his return, Zegers fractured his ankle. What was initially expected to keep him out for six to eight weeks ended up sidelining him for 10 weeks. Despite this, though, he returned strong once again, posting eight points in his final 11 games and showing improvement in his two-way game, an area where he's often criticized. Zegers is now at a crossroad in his career. I know I'm biased, he is one of my favorite players, but unless you've watched every painstaking minute of Ducks hockey over the past few years, you can't fully appreciate what Zegers has meant to this fan base. Aside from watching Getzloff's final years, there was almost no reason to follow the Ducks, but Zegers gave us a reason, until last season when Leo Carlson entered the picture. Z made the Ducks watchable, even when the hockey being played wasn't. He put up back-to-back 60-point seasons on some of the worst teams in the league, ranking fourth in all-time points through 200 games played in Ducks history. Pretty elite company, if you ask me. Some have called this a make-or-break season for Zegras, though I wouldn't go that far. I think it's more of a make-or-break season for his future in Anaheim. The latest report on Zegras' trade rumors is that it's quiet, though I'm sure those rumors will continue. So far this preseason, Zegras hasn't played center other than for one game. He has mostly been on McTavish's wing, and it looks like he will be on the right side too. Not the best position for him to succeed. Although he's a natural center, his defensive game might be better suited to the wing, but playing center gives him more options offensively. Even so, I fully expect him to have a bounce back season. And I'm saying it now, I think Zegers will be our leading scorer next year, with Carlson and McTavish slightly behind him. I'm hoping for 80 points, but realistically, 70-75 should be the target if he stays healthy. The main thing that will keep him from achieving this is that currently he is on the second power play unit. I get why Z has to be there though, there would be no playmaker on power play number two without him, but the power play should be overloaded. Move Terry down and put McTavish in front of the net. Terry can just as easily carry the puck in like Zegras. Well, maybe not as easily, but good enough. I really hope Z performs well. There are definitely questions about his game still, but the Ducks are a completely different team with him in the lineup. I already talked about Carlson, Cutter, McTavish, and Terry in full videos, so if you haven't yet, go watch those. But otherwise, here are my expectations for the remaining forwards on the team. Alex Kalorin looked okay in preseason. At least he didn't get injured this year, which was probably the goal for him anyway. The hope is he can do something similar to his second half of the season after his knee surgery. While he will never live up to his contract, if he keeps things simple, cleaning up rebounds, and letting Cutter and Leo do the heavy lifting, especially Leo, there's no reason to think he can't hit 50 points on the top line this season. He's also been the net front presence on the power play unit early on, so he will have plenty of opportunities for points. Frank Vitrano, our leading scorer from last season, I don't expect him to repeat that performance. However, 20 plus goals should be easily within reach. If he is our leading scorer, something has gone wrong, especially now that he's slotted on the third line and is on the second power play unit. There's also the possibility of him being traded, depending on how the Ducks perform. Personally, I'm tired of seeing players get traded and I hope he stays especially since Fratrano wants to be here, but we also don't want to overpay him. We have options in San Diego that could eventually fill his role, like Colangelo, so it will be interesting to see what he's asking for. It would also be great if he can improve defensively. Like Fratrano, Ryan Strom also needs to improve defensively. He needs to keep things simple. His contract is probably the worst for Beak has signed so far, but 40 points seems like a reasonable expectation, as that's been his consistent output during his time in Anaheim. One of the few new faces, Robbie Fabry, scored 18 goals in a shortened season for him last year. The big question with Fabry is can he stay healthy? If he stays on the second line with McTavish and Zegras, 20 goals doesn't feel like it's out of the question. But given his injury history, even 15 goals would be a solid contribution. He is also a potential trade candidate. I wish I could say I expect Ross Johnson not to play, but we all know that's unlikely. He looks like the extra forward right now, so hopefully his playing time is limited. If he's in the lineup, no one else should be fighting except for him. Isaac Lunderstrom. I honestly thought his time in Anaheim would be up after the season before last. He's always reliable defensively, but he still hasn't found his offensive game. Hitting 20 points should be the goal for him this year. Like Fabry, I could see him being a potential trade piece. And I wouldn't be surprised if Nathan Gaucher eventually steps into his role. And now it seems there is some worry as Lundy went down at practice. 
He dealt with an Achilles injury to start the season last year, so hopefully he is okay. I really like Brent Leeson's game. He just needs to keep up what he's been doing and stay a regular in the lineup. 10 goals seems within reach, and I wouldn't be shocked to see him put 15 on the board. But unfortunately, he will be competing for time with guys like Johnston and McGinn. Brock McGinn is another player who just needs to stay healthy for his goal this season. He's a solid fourth liner and someone I could also see being traded. I've already mentioned a few names as potential trade candidates come the deadline. Realistically, I think there are four forwards who could be on the chopping block. I think Frank is the most likely to stay, but Fabry, Lunderstrom, and McGinn are all possibilities. Trading these guys would give the Ducks a chance to bring up some younger players and get them some NHL experience. The Ducks have options that could fill their roles without too much concern. Speaking of which, the Ducks actually have some forward depth this year. Here's a list of players who I think could get called up, ordered by the likelihood that they will. I was going to put Sasha Postuoff higher on this list, but he has been sent down to the ECHL, so pretty shocking there. I expect Harkins to be the first call up simply because of his contract and veteran presence. And with that, we've completed the expectation videos for every player on the Ducks opening night roster. Be sure to watch any that you have missed, or read the article versions in the pinned comment down below. Thank you to our members. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and go Ducks! It kind of just hit me all at once that like the mullet was for me because it's perfect. It's long in all the right places. Mm -hmm. You wear a hat. There's nothing on the sides. You put the helmet on. feels like you have short hair, but you still got the flow coming out the back. So we're calling it the skill guy mullet.